previously on Project Maverick 1000. We're gonna check out some side by side. There is something majorly <laughs> up with the transmission. I paid six grand for it. I got a lot of the backstory. It's definitely had a rough pass. Hack job roof. Oh, it looks amazing. This god awful graphics kit looks so much better. I want to take off this snorkel kit. All wired absolutely terribly. Stock exhaust that we're gonna be getting rid of. <laughs> Well, you can hear that thing's already making weird noise. Check out the carnage. Well, this is definitely a lot more simple than the OEM setup. I want to put the light bar on. The AFR. But our gauge is not mounted yet. Making your own snorkel system. This came out awesome. And on this episode, these little LED light bars. Well, that ain't no light bar. You need to get a real man's light bar. It's surprising how much light these things put out. Wire up a couple more lights. Put a couple lights in the back, and I also want to put them on the side. We're going to wire up the front light bar, too. We'll see how that works out. When it's all done, it'll be a waterproof system that should last a really long time. This thing was kind of a puzzle taking it apart. It's probably going to be even worse putting it back together. Let's see what this light bar looks like holy shit yo that is bright <laughs> oh dude when you get <laughs> when you get in front of it man that thing is blinding hey what's going on guys i have kind of like a mess of stuff in front of me here as we're finishing up project maverick we're sort of at an opportune time right now before we put the body panels and stuff on to wire up a couple more lights. So I figured I would take this opportunity to put a couple lights in the back and I also wanna put them on the side. So not only have you guys recommended putting some more LED lights on these, but they're cheap enough to do. And also when I had the Ranger, I went night riding a handful of times. And I did notice when you get stuck in ruts or when you're going in reverse at nighttime, it's like pitch black when you're looking around the rig. So I have these little LED light bars that are really gonna help out. They're not gonna be super bright or anything crazy, but they're gonna make a hell of a lot of difference when it's pitch black at night and they're probably gonna be really handy. Now at first glance, some of you guys might be like, well that ain't no light bar. You need to get a real man's light bar. But we're not really going for that guys. This is, the whole idea is to just have a little bit of extra light while we're out on the trails. And believe it or not, these things are pretty damn bright. We're gonna wire up the front light bar too. We'll see how that works out. So obviously I've opened up these, but I do have another box right here. They come in two packs. So this was one box. I just want to see what they looked like. They're very, very lightweight. They are made of some sort of aluminum. Um, they seem like they're going to be pretty durable. They're made by Nylite, this company right here. It's the same company that I bought the light bar from, which supposedly has good reviews. It's supposed to be like one of the better Chinese knockoff uh, light bars. So I decided to stick with that brand. I also have a switch here. It even says rear lights. Pretty cool. So that'll fit in our instrument cluster really nicely. Uh, that's from Nylite also. Everything's Nylite. So these things were super inexpensive, dude. It was 20 bucks for two of them. So you're looking at 10 bucks a pop. Couldn't really resist. So I will go ahead and I'll wire these up. We'll put our Deutsch connectors on. Um, if you guys saw the one wiring video, I talked about these connectors. I went ahead and bought like a big kit because I ran out of them. These things are excellent. I'll show you how to use these things. They are fairly expensive. A set like this runs about $150 and you get a ton of connectors and you also get the uh, connect the tool. These tools are like, they're like between $40 and $60, believe it or not for this, but it comes with this set. So, I mean, it's really not that bad if you're doing a lot of wiring and if you're not doing that much wiring and you just want good weatherproof connectors, a set like that's going to last you a really long time. And regardless, I will link in the description below where you can get a similar kit to this. And I'll also have these lights linked below and the switch. So I'll open up this other box, show you how these things come. Pretty compact. They're, I think they're six inch light bars. Very compact. They're low profile. You can see the little feet when we put these on here they're barely gonna be sticking off of the roll cage where we're putting them. They have a two-year warranty, believe it or not. I think it says it right there, two-year warranty. So you get this little bag. It comes with some hardware, the little mounting brackets, and an Allen wrench. And of course, you got the light bar itself. And these are made of aluminum. They feel like they're built pretty well. They're lightweight, for sure. Um, they have the fins on one side and not on the other. So I will most likely mount these with the fins on the bottom like that because I don't want water pooling in there. Now, if you guys watched the video where I got the 42 inch light bar, I pulled all the bolts out, the sides off and I siliconed the inside. That's supposed to be some extra measure on these cheaper LED light bars. Supposedly they're notoriously, they leak. Um, I'm going to let these I'm gonna let these ones be the way that they came. One, because they were really cheap, 
and two, because I wanna test that out. We'll see if we get moisture in here. They did have, you can actually see that white uh, rubber strip in there. These may very well be waterproof and we might be spinning our wheels by going that extra measure and using the silicone. All right, before we go any further, especially since these are cheaper parts, I wanna test out these lights. So I have this old battery charger, 12 volts. We'll hook up to our leads here and we'll make sure these things work. I did test out um, the two that I opened and I'll tell you what, man, it's surprising how much light these things put out. You'll see. Woo. I'll tell you what, man, that is, geez, really can't look right into these things. Um, I think we won't get a really good representation of how bright these are until it's nighttime, but for a little six led light strip, I mean, it looks like it's going to put out a lot of light. And when it's pitch black at night, this is going to be awesome. Now, I don't know the lumens or wattage rating of these things. I'm going to look that up and I will put it in a little note down here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead, test out these other lights, and then we'll get to putting our Deutsch pins on and making our wire harness so that we can wire these up and get them mounted. All right now, the first thing I want to do is put our connectors on the LED light bars. So we're going to use Deutsch connectors. These things are super awesome plugs. They're super universal, really high quality. Uh, they can go for just about any any pin combination. You can see this is like a three pin right here. We've got two pin connectors right here, all the way up to 12 pin. And that's just in this set. I mean, they have so many assortments and different style plugs, it's crazy. But they're really high quality. They can be removed and re-plugged back in many times without, you know, if you've ever, if you're familiar with clips and stuff, they can be a real pain in the ass, like pieces uh, fall off, the clips break off when they're used multiple times. These hold up really well. They're, they're just really high quality plugs. So for these lights, they're gonna be real easy. We just need two pins. So we'll be using the two pin connectors here. Now this is a male plug. Of course, here's your female. And I like to keep the wire harness, female plugs, and anything being plugged into it male. So this light bar is gonna be a male. So I'll kind of walk you through here. First thing I like to do is twist up my wires, make them a little bit more rigid. And the male connectors get female pins. And then you'll see on this pin, there's a little hole. And believe it or not, that's an inspection hole. You wanna be able to just see the edge of the wire. So we want to cut these down to be just as long as this bottom portion and it'll go in perfect depth. Now I used to do this a lot at my old job, so I don't really need to measure it. I can usually just kind of estimate where it goes and I've got a good feel for it. Then we're going to take our Deutsch connector tool. You can see it's got little pins that come in and crimp this little cylinder. So you put the pin in there, crimp it, Sometimes I like to do it twice, give it a tug test, and that's good to go. That's never gonna fall off, and it's gonna be a super good bond. Now we'll push these pins into our connector, and they are numbered. You can see one. I don't know if you guys can see that on there. It's real, real faint. In person, it's easy to see, but there is a one on there. And on this side, there's a two. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna make my positive number one. And we'll make the ground number two. You just push them in there and they'll come in and they clip in place. And then once they're in like that, you have these little retaining clips. These pop in place and they're gonna ensure that those pins line up nicely and they won't come out. Now, if you have to remove any of these pins or anything, they do have a tool it looks like a little fork that goes up and underneath and it pops off these connectors really easy. And then you just have to use a little pick to pull the little pins out of here. But these clips and uh, pins can all be reused. Not the pins, uh, but the connectors themselves can be reused. All right, now I like to put a little bit of black loom on here. So this is quarter inch loom. It's pretty basic. You just kind of eye it up how long you need it. Take a pair of wire cutters or you can just use scissors. This stuff's pretty easy to work with. And then you just kind of, it's split loom. You just kind of put it in place. Now I usually like to put a little bit of tape on each of the ends just so that it doesn't come off. And if you really don't want your loom moving, what some guys like to do is wrap their tape around the wire and then you put the loom over it and then wrap it around the loom and now it won't move. But a lot of times on shorter wires like this, 
I won't even bother because chances are it's not gonna move. Okay, so this wire is done. This will be really easy. If I need to remove it, I'll be able to plug it in, unplug it. It looks nice. The wire's protected with this sheath. So we're, we're solid here. So I'll go ahead and finish up these other three lights. And in the meantime, let me show you where I'm planning on mounting these things. So as far as the side goes, the whole idea of these lights is so that if you're stuck and you're looking over the edge, trying to see you know, what you're next to, what kind of rut you're in, I wanna have light right here. It's not so much to go flush out to, or flood out to the sides and you know see what's in the woods next to you or anything. It's really to see what's on the ground right next to you. So what I wanna do is mount these either back here like this or here. So it's most likely gonna go up here and that should give us some nice light flooding right down on the ground here. Now, as for the back, we have a lot of options. You know, these are small too. So there's a lot of different places we could put these things. Um, I considered possibly mounting them like that. I thought that would be a pretty trick location. Plus like the vertical look is probably different than what most guys run. Uh, but I think where I'm gonna put them is right here. I have seen other guys mount them here. This is slightly angled in, so it'll kind of be like a cross. This one will kind of go out that way. That one will go out this way. And also in this location, I think it'll light up our cargo area a little bit. The other idea I had was possibly mounting them both in the middle. I could put them up here. Not 100% sure. And I do think it would look cool like this. So still kicking around the idea there but there will be two lights in the back to help with uh, going in reverse and also possibly a little bit of help in that cargo area. Now I have these little feet in place before I go uh, lining these up where I wanna put them so we can mark for our holes. And I did wanna mention these bolts that come in the kits, I think they're just slightly too long. When you thread these in, that's about as far as they go. So granted, when you have the washers on there, it is, it does at least stay in place, but you can move it. And that's not tight enough for what we're doing. So you could shave down these bolts or you could replace them with shorter ones. I think what I'm gonna do is just put a thicker washer on here because it is snug as it is. I think a thicker washer will be just enough so we can tighten these down. I just wanted to mention that in case you guys buy these. Now, if I really wanted, I could measure these and get them in the exact right spots on each side. But for what we're doing, I'm just gonna eye them up. Now I'll take a center punch and mark our holes. Now I'm gonna drill and tap my holes for a 10 millimeter bolt. And you'll notice I'm only doing one hole for each of these LED lights. That's so that I can bolt it in and make it straight and then mark my second hole. I think it'll be a little more accurate that way. Now when I'm running my tap through, I like to use a little bit of lubricating wax and go full speed ahead. If you go slow, you risk snapping the tap. Now with the bar like this, I can play around with it and get it exactly where I want. So they're all mounted up. I have the, the angle is loose, so I can adjust that. When uh, we test these things out, which we're gonna do in this video, then I'll have that tightened up, but all the brackets are tight. I didn't use the hardware that came with them to bolt to the, the actual frame or roll cage. These are little 10 millimeter zinc coated bolts. You can get them really cheap. And it did turn out that if you just double stack the washers, on these little hex bolts, they work just fine. You can tighten these down. So these are out of harm's way. You can see this is tucked under pretty nice. No uh, branches or debris or anything should hit that. Same thing with, with the ones back here. I wanted them to be kind of tucked away. And with that mesh net's going to be here. You'll barely even see those things from the inside. You can kind of see there. Those things should be nice and safe. All right, guys, now I'm about to make the wire harness for this thing, which is gonna be 
a little bit difficult to show. So before I pull out the center console again, I just wanted to show you guys, I have the harness laying in here. And this is that Nylite harness that I bought with the light bar, but I'm actually not, the front light bar, I'm actually not gonna use that for that light bar. I decided I'm gonna run that through the factory harness. And then these four uh, reverse and side lights will all be run through this Nylite harness. So there's a couple leads here in the back. There's a relay with a fuse that will be connecting directly to the battery, which is back here. Then there is a wire that's gonna travel right up the center console. And this will attach to our switch so that we can control the thing. I'm gonna be replacing this connector here with a Deutsch connector because this is not a waterproof connector and that is prone to failure. So we might as well just switch that out. And then I have the other lead, which will be running up the roll cage. And this only has connectors for one light. So what I'm gonna do is run all the way over to the furthest light, which is closest to you guys. And I'm just going to splice in connectors for all the other lights. We will put the matching loom on this and it's gonna be really nice. We'll use all waterproof connectors, all waterproof splices. And when it's all done, it'll be a waterproof system that should last us a really, last, a really long time. I'm really happy with how easily it was to remove the center console when I designed these rear snorkels, which if you haven't seen the video, definitely check that out. I engineered it so that it would be easy to remove the center console. Now, what I'm doing here is mocking up the harness and seeing where I will need to splice in my connections. All right guys, check it out. This wire harness is coming along really nicely. You can see I replaced that one three pin connector with a Deutsch connector. And as you come down the harness, I've spliced in connectors for our lights. And I am gonna loom all of this. I just wanted to show you really quick along the way. This one has a longer lead. And then here's the third one. And then of course, we'll be putting one on in the end. That's actually what I'm gonna show you because it's a female connector. It's a little bit different than the male connector. I was just gonna do it in front of you. So we'll get rid of these ends from the factory harness. Pins is pretty much the same process as the females. You can see what the pin looks like. Just like with the, the female, you can see it has that little hole, the little inspection window. These wires just barely make it in there. And I'm just gonna give these one crimp. Oh, that one's a little bit long, but that's all right. And then same thing with our connector. Our red wire is gonna go in number one. And then for these, You've got this little blue thing that fits in a slot here. It can kind of be a pain in the ass to just drop in place. So usually I'll use a tiny needle nose. And then they clip. And that one's done. All right, so the wire harness is basically done. I'm just gonna loom this thing up, make it look nice, and then we'll zip tie it in place, connect it up, and we'll test these lights out. are getting close man we're all wired up I even wired up the light bar you can see it comes down here goes into a little hole I drilled here runs along here I cut the wire a little bit too long so I just wound it up right here everything's nice and tight I 
put all of our switches and everything in. You can see all of our lights are wired up. The zip ties don't look too bad. If I really wanted to get fancy, I could drill holes in the frame and run the wires through the roll cage, but I think that's a little unnecessary. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see this. I know the, uh, the sun's pretty bright. But everything's nice and tight. Give you guys a look at the dash. Got our air fuel ratio gauge in. All of our lights and everything work. So believe it or not, guys, we're actually at a point where we can start putting on the body uh, panels and fenders and stuff. I can't put all of them on yet because we're waiting for our, for our heat sensor for our CVT. So I want to leave like the center console and stuff open. But as far as the back goes, I think I can put all that stuff on. I think I can put the cargo net on. Uh, I might even be able to put the hood on and the, and the front lights and stuff as long as I can still get access to that dash area so I can put the, the gauge in for the temperature. Yeah, man, so we can start assembling this thing. On a side note, if you guys recall, this one bolt, when I tried putting it in the first time, I screwed it up. I did get the replacement in, and it's in there perfectly fine. I didn't have to use any washers. This one flat washer here is the wave washer that comes with this bolt, so there were no extra washers that I needed to put on. All right, so we got the body panels and the cargo net. We got pieces all over the place. This thing was kind of a puzzle taking it apart, so it's probably going to be even worse putting it back together. Wish me luck, guys. I'm going to start by taking the little reflecting indicators off of the side because I said I was going to get rid of those and then we'll see if we can get this thing together. All right, guys, this is about as far as I'm gonna get tonight. You can see the back is pretty much done, both sides. And it's taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. And I think that's because basically a whole bunch of these tabs and everything were snapped off. So I've been doing a little bit of custom work, you know, making them so that they're still tight. I don't want them wiggling around or anything. So it's just been a little bit finicky and it's been time consuming. So it is dark out. So before it gets too late that I don't wanna fire this up and make the neighbors too angry, I want to take this outside and show you how these lights look. Cargo net is in there. Everything worked out, it's nice and tight. And you can see these bars here. I got these, I think it was 25 bucks shipped for those because those were missing on this side by side. You can see our lights in the back. I already tested everything out. Have not tested it outside though. So I'm really curious to see what it looks like. All right, so anybody new to the series, the check engine light is nothing new. It's because we have a whole bunch of stuff was disconnected and there's still a few things disconnected, but anyways, this is what the center console looks like now. I think it looks pretty trick. Orange on the left, blue on the right. All the switches on the right are the aftermarket ones. Uh, of course, you got the key and the start button. 12 volt uh, power is still there. And of course, our AFR. So I'm just gonna kinda go into this clearing behind the house. I can't really go crazy right now because it's too late. This thing's pretty noisy. So I just wanna kinda take it down where it's a little bit dark. And uh, we'll see how these lights look. All right, so I mean, it's pretty dark right here. Let's see what this light bar looks like. Holy shit. Yo, that is bright. <laughs> All right, I knew that was gonna be bright. All right, let's check out the side and rear lights. All right, all right. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, that's pretty bright. Like I said, it wasn't gonna be anything crazy. I knew it wasn't. But you can see all this area back here, how lit up that is. You know, when it's pitch black and you're trying to back out of something, that's gonna be so much help. And uh, you can see in here too, it lights up the cargo area. 
pretty happy with the way they're set. That's probably where I'll tighten them down. And you can see all this area on the side is lit up. That was the big thing. If you're stuck in a rut or something, or there's like a log, when it's pitch black out, you have no idea what the hell's going on. So unless you have a flashlight or something, but this way with a flick of a switch, you know, you're good to go. And I think that looks, that looks pretty awesome. I'm really happy with that. Let's flip on this uh, light bar and see what it looks like with everything on. That looks pretty crazy, man. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. Holy hell. Oh, dude, when you get <laughs> when you get in front of it, man, that thing is blinding. Oh, that's really cool, man. I'm really happy with this. You guys will have to let me know if you think these little side lights are worth it or what. I think that's perfect. I'm really, really happy. Oh, what the hell? We'll go spaceship mode and just take it down the road real quick. It's not that noisy. happy with that it's pretty bright <laughs> not bad for cheap chinese lights i'm pretty happy man well i hope i was able to teach you guys something in this video i had a lot of fun making the wire harness and everything for this unfortunately i couldn't film all the little details because there were so much like minute things that i did uh, something that i didn't mention too every single bolt that i put in these lights was loctite with blue loctite um, all dielectric grease on all of the connectors. And like I said before, all weatherproof connectors, all weatherproof wire splices, everything is weatherproof. This should last forever. Just to recap, all of the lights on this are by Nylite. I will have links in the description below of the front light bar. You can see the install of that in another video. And also the little the six inch light bars, they were all Nylite as well. The switches are Nylite. I kind of like to keep things brand specific. Now you might be able to have the same exact results with a different brand. Like I said, it's not a high quality brand. I mean, I don't want to say it's low quality, but <laughs> it's not like a top notch brand. It was just another eBay, Amazon brand. Like I said, they had really good reviews and it was supposedly this company, if you have any issues with these lights, they're supposed to be very responsive, um, really good with, you know, returns and stuff like that. So that's kind of why I chose them. So I'm happy with the way they came out. They feel like they're good quality. They put out a lot of light. So we'll just have to see how they hold up. I really want to see if they're waterproof. So if you guys are going to use these same lights, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear what your experiences are. Plus, other people like to hear that stuff too. You don't have to use the Deutsch connectors or any of that stuff. You can use the stuff that comes from um, Nylite or whatever connectors you want to use. I definitely recommend using the high quality stuff. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to last you a lot longer, especially with a machine like this or a quad dirt bike. Stuff that gets wet and dirty and you know it's susceptible to mud and stuff getting in there, it's, it's worth using the good connectors. Trust me. I feel like once you use that stuff, you never go back. But regardless, I appreciate everybody watching. Make sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this content. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm waiting for this 250R stuff to come back. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. This stuff is still a powder coat. So that will be coming soon. If you guys are new to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. There is a project that we're working on. We're completely doing a motocross squad. It's going to be badass. That's going to be really shortly in the future. And we're also doing a YZ125 shortly after that. So this squad, or uh, side by side, is basically done, guys. Just uh, waiting on that temperature sensor for the belt. And um, probably tomorrow I'm going to have the hood and everything on. And it's getting exciting, man. I appreciate y'all. Peace out.